What's up guys and welcome back. So I wanna show you one of the most important uh, things you can have in a shop for production and that's your cart. And your prep cart needs to be set up with everything in it that you have for the job. So you don't wanna be running around looking for things when you're doing production work or any kind of work. You wanna have everything close at hand. That way you got it right there in front of you to prep it out and do what you gotta do. So I don't know if I've showed you guys my cart, but I wanted to show you how I have it set up and how I have everything on it right here close by. And when I prep a job out, I can run right over to that job with the cart and get it uh, prepped out. So you wanna have everything right at hand, all your main items that you use on a day-to-day -day basis. So I have my 320 block paper. That's what I use to block all my primer out. And then I run over it with a DA with a soft pad with 400. And uh, I've got my Norton pads, the new ones that I just got. Those are the ones of, you know, things I use a lot on my blend edges. Before these, I was using the uh, Sky pads, so from Kovacs or a red scotch right around the edge. So my assortment of sandpapers is 400 for my primer and new parts. Then I use 600 grit to refine the scratch on the 400. And then on all my blends, I'm using 800 grit DA with a red scotch bright or either the sky pad 800 all around the edges of that so you guys see i got my tape i got a trash can right in this thing and it lets me have everything right there so that way i don't have to run around and you can keep it neat when you throw something out throw your throw your uh old stuff right into the garbage can that way you don't make a mess all over the place and i have my cleaning cloths down here at the bottom scotch bright pads and a mask. All my cleaners, I use the wax and grease and then the waterborne and my razor blades and uh, anything that you guys need that you're gonna you know, use on an everyday basis, the guide coat. That way you don't have to go looking for nothing and you have everything right on this cart. You roll over to it, to the job and you can prep them out. So that's the way I do it. And uh, to me, it's been the best for production. You don't want to run around looking for stuff. You want to roll the cart, make sure it's rollable. Just roll right over to the job. And then you have everything you got when you're going to prep out this job. So just wanted to show you the setup because some of you guys were asking me about it. All right, guys, so I'm over here at this panel and I'm going to show you how I would prep this out. So this is a blend and we've already primed it. So when I'm ready to tape these up for primer, I went ahead and 400 it and read it around the primer area. I had this masked up so that way nothing would get as much overspray on the blend panel. So now that I'm done with the primer part, I'm gonna come over here and show you what I do. My first steps are gonna be to clean the panel off with a waterborne cleaner. Just nice and quick, spray it down and get the majority of the dirt and stuff off of this panel. That way you don't have dirt in your sandpaper and you don't uh, clog the paper up and you don't wanna sand that into the sand scratches because that's gonna contaminate your sand scratch. So get the majority of it off and this is how I do it. And you guys know around them handles, they got stuff caked up all the time. So we're gonna hit that quick and then uh, we'll show you what I do next. So now that we got the majority of that off, I'm gonna still wet it back up. And I like to do this cause it scuffs it and it cleans it at the same time, but get the majority of that stuff off of there. That way you're not sanding it into the scratch. So I get me a soft maroon red and I blend into red scuff pads. They don't, it doesn't affect me and I don't use a wet bed. So you guys do what works for you. This is what I do. And uh, to me, it works the best. It's the fastest, cleanest way that I've been able to do it and get it done quick. So you guys know when you're in production, you gotta get things done right away because that's part of the game is being fast, efficient, doing it right 
the first time and not having any comebacks because that's what slows down the assembly line. So now I'll scuff around this really good to clean up around this handle hole. All right, we got that scuffed and clean. You guys see I got my wipes right here close by. Everything's close by. That way that I can get to it fast and uh, knock it out. So you don't want to go looking around for nothing. In the morning, load up your cart, get it filled. That way you can get to your uh, car and get it over with. So while I'm cleaning it now, I'm going to wipe the edge off here because I'll be back taping this door and it'll be going on a stand. So while I'm doing that, I'm thinking of the next stage. And that way I don't have to clean the back of this later when I go to mask it. Just clean the edge. You have a little bit on this towel enough to clean the edge off. That way when you back tape it, you're good. So we got most of that off. Everything's scuffed now and clean. And now I'll hit it with my guide coat for the uh, primer. This one, you don't really need the guide coat. I always tell you guys how this P30 is shiny. And I'm just showing you in case you guys aren't using a shiny primer, hit it with the guide coat. And then I'm coming in with my 320 block and I'm gonna just hit it with my regular Dura block right now because I don't want to turn the volume on of the vacuum, but you guys have a vacuum, use the vacuum. Now I'll block it. Once I see Bondo or Putty, because you guys know that's not gonna not happen in this body shop business. But once I see something breaking through, that's when I stop. So you don't wanna keep sanding and get rings. So once I guide coat it, and I get to the putty or I see something's breaking through, that's when I stop because I gotta still hit this with my DA to refine this 320 grit. That way we don't have any sand scratches. Even though I'm sealing this, I like to cut my scratch down a little bit. That way that sealer doesn't soak in too much to that scratch. The finer you get it, the better. And I only get it so fine. I don't want it too fine. I want something to have something to bite to. So to me on my primer, I don't usually go any further than six just because I want to have something to actually give it something to bite on. That's why when you guys seen when I did the cutlass, I went ahead and just 400 it because I knew I was sealing and I wanted the maximum adhesion because that candy's got so much material. You want to give it something to bite to that way it holds because the thicker you get something, the more chance you have of a delamination. So we got this block. We'll blow it off and I'll show you how I hit it with my DA. All right, so I went ahead and blew off the panel, re-guide coated this, and now I'm gonna hit it with my 400. And now I'll hit it with six. Throw your paper right into the can when you're done with it. That way you don't make a mess. We'll go over this right here with six. Now we'll hit it with our uh, Norton flexible film with the 800 on it. And I take this and I just put it on the end of the red scuff pad. You can fold this over. And I use this now by hand. Hit all your edges. And run your lines straight this way. That way you have a consistent pattern with your sanding. Don't go all over the place. Try to run it in a parallel motion here, one way and get it uh, sanded out. So hit your edges good. All right, guys, we got that door fully prepped. The blend, 800. 
We did our body work, blocked it, and we do have a little bit of uh, putty or bondo showing there, but the sealer will catch that and we'll keep an eye on that when we seal it. So we blocked it down till we got to our actual putty. That way we know we went as far as we could to make it look straight. So that's how I prep out my primer and my blends. And then I'll show you here. Our, so this is a recon bumper. And on these, either I'll use a 600 DA or I'll run around them with a red scotch bright backed by these uh, flexible film and it really works good. So hit it with a 600 DA on these aftermarket. Make sure you get all your edges because you guys know they have burrs all around these aftermarkets for the bad molds in them. I hit them and make sure I get all my lines down. That way it looks good when you paint it. Don't look like it's just pressed out of the mold. So, all right, so this here's the new E-coated uh, brand new part. These I hit with a 400 DA and then I run around with them with a red scotch bright. And on the inside, I don't scuff them. I just kind of scuff around the edge good because we have a chromatic sealer which sticks and it's guaranteed to stick to the E-coat. So I do go around my window areas and sand this because I want to make sure I get adhesion. And like I say, I run around the edge and catch a little bit of the edge of the inside, but most of that is fine because it's got the chromatic sealer here that sticks and it's guaranteed to the E-coat. So that's how I prep out my new parts. All right, so here you see a uh, raw OE bumper. And on these, I'll take my waterborne cleaner and a gray scuff pad and scuff these out. And then once I get them in the booth, I go ahead and uh, use the uh, plastic wipe, the uh, plastic cleaner, static cleaner. And then I rewater them just to cut down on the static and then I hit adhesion them. So I hit all my raw bumpers with a gray scotch bright, really good, make sure you adhesion them because these will peel on you if you don't. So that's how I do my raw bumpers. All right, guys, so I hope you got something out of this one, uh, how I prep them and keep your cart close by with all the stuff you need in it. That way you can really get to your job with all the stuff you need. You're not running around looking for nothing and you're just producing. So that's how I do it. And I hope you guys got something out of this. Set your cart up, have it organized with the stuff that you use on a day to day. Keep your garbage can close by. That way you can throw stuff out and try to keep it as neat as you can. That way you're not looking for nothing and you have everything you need close by your cleaners and all your stuff to get a job prepped out quick, right, and done the first time. So I hope you guys like this little video and we'll see you on the next one.